Okay, today we are talking about what is called implicit differentiation. Differentiation. Nine syllables in two words. That's ridiculous. Implicit differentiation. We're doing our objectives on the board a little differently, and so if I want to ask my department to do it, I've got to be doing it myself. And I'm writing them over here on the board, and it says, we will learn how to take the derivative of implicitly defined equations today. And by the end of class, you should be able to take the derivative of an equation using implicit, differenti implicit differentiation. Well, right now, that probably means nothing to you because you don't know what all this stuff is and what it means. So I'm going to try this this one time, and that's actually to stand up and walk away. Hopefully the video can still hear what I'm saying. Okay. How many of you have heard the word implicit outside of math class before? A lot of you. What is the root word of implicit? Implied. Implied. What does implied mean? To Assumed. Assumed. Assumed is a good synonym. It's not, it's not overtly stated. You know, if I say that trig derivatives are going to be on the quiz on Friday, it's implied that you better do the worksheet. I don't have to come right out and say, you need to do the worksheet. That's kind of an apply. It's kind of an under, understatement. So what is the antonym of implicit? Explicit. explicit. Now, is explicit a bad word? Yeah. Yes, it all. No. No, it's really not. But it tends, in today's society, explicit is considered negative because of its all, it's always an um, adjective for things that are bad. Explicit lyrics, explicit content, explicit, you know, violence. But explicit doesn't mean bad. It, it means what? Uncensored. Uncensored. Right out there. Just in your face. Okay? They'll come right out and say, a string of expletives in the middle of that song on the radio, or they won't put it on the radio, on the, on the album. Okay? So, implicit means subtle. Explicit means out there. So, when it comes to functions, every function is an explicit function because it's explicitly solved for y. Okay? So, if an explicit function is solved for y, what do you think an implicit relation is? Mm, that's a good guess. Okay, but it's the antonym, so it means it's not solved for y. Okay, so now think back in the break two years ago, algebra two, long time ago. Okay, we worked with some equations that were not solved for y, and they had y's and y's that were squared in them. Can you remember something that you learned about an algebra two pre that had a y that was squared? Again. A circle. Doesn't a circle equation have a y squared? It has an r squared. It has an r squared too. X squared plus y squared equals one. That's a circle, right? What was that family of things that we talked about that had circles in it? Ellipses. Conic sections, ellipses, what else? Hyperbolas and because of the P. Parabolas. The four conic sections. Not solved for y. Okay? Those are implicit relations. They're called relations because they can't be functions. Okay? So we're going to write those definitions down that we've been talking about here. An implicit relation. Some books call it an implicit equation. Okay. It happens to be an equation that is not solved for y. For example, x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's implicit. Okay. Implicit differentiation is differentiating implicit relations. So let's talk about what that means. Implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation. Okay. I will define the word 
I will use the word differentiation in a sentence, and that should, to you should tell you what it means. So far in the last few weeks, I have taught you how to differentiate functions using the product rule, the quotient rule, the power rule, and the chain rule. What does differentiate mean? It means to take the derivative. Haven't I taught you how to take the derivative using the power rule, the quotient rule, etc.? So implicit differentiation means taking the derivative of implicit functions or implicit relations. So it means taking the derivative of implicit equations. So that's what you're going to learn how to do today, is how to take the derivative of an equation that is not solved for y. Okay. The key to doing this is all in the chain rule. So what I'm going to do is show you how to take the derivative of a y that is not just a single y using a long method and eventually we're going to get to a place where we can just do it with a shortcut. Okay. Now the chain rule is the key to the long way. So let me write this down. D per over dx parentheses y. ddx of y. What does that mean? It means the derivative of y. Now we've learned a couple of ways to write down the derivative of y. What have we learned? Okay, y prime. I want, I want the answer just to have a y in it, not f prime of x. y prime or what else? It was on the last group assignment. dy dx. That's the one we're going to focus on today. So whenever you take the derivative of a y in this lesson, I want you to write dy dx. Okay? Now we're going to talk about how to take the derivative of y squared. Now I put that y in a parentheses for a reason. We're going to take the derivative of y squared. If this variable here, d over dx, is different from the variable in the parentheses, you have to use the chain rule. You don't have a choice. Next week, we're going to change this x right here to a t. And we're going to take derivatives with respect to time. But for right now, I want you to notice that if this is an x and this is a y, you have to use the chain rule. Here's how you do it. We have the outer function and the inner function. Okay. The outer function, what do you think it is? Parentheses squared. And what's inside the parentheses? The y. Okay. How do you take the derivative of something squared? To something to the first, right? What goes in the parentheses in this case? Just y. Okay. When you do the chain rule, you do the derivative of the outer, and then you do the derivative of the inner. So what did I just tell you we're going to write for the derivative of the inner? dy over dx. So times dy dx, and I know that's kind of squished, so I'm going to rewrite it this way. 2y dy dx. Because it's the derivative of the inner. I have to do the derivative of the outer and the derivative of the inner. Okay, now let's talk about the derivative of sine of y. What's the outer function this time? What's the outer function this time? Sine is. Sine of parentheses. And the inner function is the y again. The inner function is always y. Okay, so we take the derivative of the outer, which would be what? Cosine. Cosine. Put the parentheses. What goes in the parentheses? Y, y times dy. dy over dx. So that's going to step y dy dx. Okay, does anybody see a pattern here? What do you see that these two have in common on the end of their problem? They all have a dy dx, okay? So what I want you to do is I'm going to write a problem down. I want you to talk to your table and see if you can do the derivative of that without writing outer and inner. 
See if you can do that. Talk to your table about it. I want you to write down what the derivative would be without writing the outer and the inner down. Can you just look at it and write down what the answer is going to be? What do you think? It's going to have a dy dx on the end. I will agree with that. Trent, what do you think? We got because you have to carry the the five in the front because you take derivatives, so you've got five y and four dy dx because you have to drop one value. <laughs> Do you see how I got 5y to the fourth dy dx? Yes. Okay. So, in summary, and I've, I, every class period has had a real tough time with this, so I'll kind of explain it to you this way. You are treating the y just like an x, aren't you? Aren't you taking its derivative as if it was an x? But then you're, at, you're putting a dy dx on the end of it. Okay. So... Think for just a minute, and then I'll ask you to say it out loud. What is the derivative of y to the third? Don't say anything just yet. Think about it. Think about what the derivative of y to the third would be. Shh. Kelly, I'm going to let you say it this time. 3y squared. Times? Times Very good. Okay. Now, time to throw you a slight curveball. Listen to me. Shh. Listen. What do you think the derivative of m to the fifth would be? 5m to the 4th times dm over dx. Exactly. Okay. So, you now know how to take the derivative of something with a y in it. You just treat it like an x and then you put a dy dx on the end. So, here's what the problems are going to look like. Write this down, please. Find the equation of the tangent line. to the curve x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 4 comma 3. Give you a minute to write that down. Find the equation of the tangent line to x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 4 comma 3. Okay, we, calculators will not help you with this because of the fact that you can't plug it in to the calculator to get a graph. Ooh, because you have x plus y squared. That's exactly right. Okay, my computer has a program that will allow me to graph these things so that you can kind of get a visual of what we're talking about. I have a picture here to show you. Okay, listen carefully. Do you know what kind of graph this is? It's a circle with it, a radius of 5. Thank you very much. It is a circle. Now, my computer distorted it a little bit. It kind of looks elliptical. But I'm trying to find the equation of that tangent line at 4, 3. That's what I'm doing, okay? So, let me pull that aside. So remember we talked about that when you're writing an equation of a tangent line, you should end up with y minus blank equals blank parentheses x minus blank. That's going to be my final answer right there, okay? Y minus blank equals blank. Whenever it asks for an equation of a tangent line, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, do I know what to put in any of those blanks yet? Yes. 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 What do I know? Four and three. Four and three. Four goes there, three goes there. That was easy. Okay. What's supposed to go here? The slope. How do you find the slope? I don't know. Take the derivative. Okay. So now we're going to talk about how do you take the derivative of this? You do not try to solve for y. It's going to be messy. We're going to take the derivative as it is. Now here's what you do. You take the problem and you work from left to right and you take the derivative of every term as you come to it. Remembering what I told you up here about y's. Okay? So start with x squared. What is the derivative of x squared? 2x. Write it down. Plus, what's the derivative of y squared? 2y dy dx. Then equals, what's the derivative of 25? zero. You have just taken a derivative using implicit differentiation. Okay? Now, we still haven't finished the problem yet though, but that is the technique of implicit differentiation. Okay, which one of the variables in that problem means the slope? The x, the y, or the dy dx? dy dx means slope, right? So that's the one we need to solve for. 
So if I'm solving for this, what needs to move? 2x. 2x. So minus 2x from both sides first. 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. Now what do we do? Divide by 2y. So dy over dx equals, can I cancel those twos? Yes. No. No. Yes. It's 2 over 2. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's just negative 1. So it's negative x divided by y. Okay. So let's talk for a minute. In words, this means that the slope on this circle is equal to the opposite of the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate at the point you're talking about. Okay? So, let's bring the circle back. What's the slope right there? Negative 4 over 3. You all agree with that? Okay. So, we write over to the side at 4 over 3 m equals negative 4 thirds. So after you find the slope, come out to the side and write at 4 comma 3, m equals negative 4 thirds. Transfer that negative 4 thirds into the slope blank, and you are now finished. You have written the equation of the tangent line. Any questions on what I just did? Okay. Okay. Do you believe you could do a problem of this level of difficulty by yourself? Yes. Or with your table? No, not with <laughs> Okay, if you want to do it by yourself, you can. If you want to do it with your table, you can. That's fine. Next problem. Here we go. Find the equation of the tangent line. 2 x squared minus y squared equals 16 at the point 5 comma negative 3. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve x squared minus y squared equals 16 at 5 negative 3. Make sure you copy it right. Okay, before I let you loose to work this, I want to show you what it looks like. Does anybody in here remember when we did conics, which conic was always subtracted? Hyperbolas. Right. No, not both of them. Uh, hyperbolas. hyperbolas are the only ones that are subtracted. <laughs> hyperbolas, yes. Okay, there's the hyperbola. Those were the ones where you drew in the box with a dotted line and then you drew in the diagonals and you put the curves in. Do you all remember that? Okay, there's the point. There's the tangent line that we're trying to find. Okay, work with your table or by yourself and see if you can get this answer. I'm going to walk around and check it. Okay. 2x minus 2y dy dx equals 0. y plus 3 equals negative 5 thirds x minus 5. Okay. Next problem. Here we go. Okay. I am changing the direction slightly, actually making it easier. This is the way the worksheet is going to look. The worksheet is just going to ask you for the slope. It's going to say find dy dx for 3x squared plus 2y squared plus 6x equals 18 nope. at the point 0, 3. Nope. Okay. All they're going to ask for is the slope at a specific point. Okay. What I would like you to do is with your table just do the first step. Take the derivative implicitly, but don't go any farther because if you made a mistake, it's going to mess up the rest of your work. See if you can do that. Take the first step. Okay. Israel, tell me what you got for the first step. 
Okay, whoa, whoa, slow down. 6x plus what? 4y dy dx plus equals 0. Okay, now look at your paper carefully. Do you have a dy dx on your paper? I do so. If you don't, you forgot something very, very important because that's what you're supposed to be solving for. If you don't have a dy dx, what are you going to solve for? Okay, there's got to be at least one there. All right, so we're going to try to get this by itself. What do we move to the other side? The 6x and the 6 at the same time. So 4y dy dx equals negative 6x minus 6. We're going to move them both. And now what? Divide by 4y, the whole thing. Now, because you're plugging in a value for x and y, you don't need to reduce the numbers. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Negative 6x minus 6 over 4y, and at the point 0, 3, the slope will be 0 minus 6 over 4 times 3, which will be negative 6 divided by 12, which will be negative 1 half. That wasn't so bad. No. I'm sorry? Yes, sir. You plug in zero because that is the x value. One for x and three for y. Exactly. Okay. I only have one more to do for today. The other harder ones we're going to save for Thursday. Okay. Last problem. Find dy dx for x y plus y equals eight at the point three comma two. Okay, I don't want you to start this one yet. Because some of you will catch what the twi the twist is on this one. Some of you won't, unless I tell you. Okay. This is an implicit function, but it is actually something that we have seen before. Let me put the picture up here. Look at that graph right there. Have you seen a graph that looks like that without the tangent yes. lines? Yeah. Uh, algebra two graph. Does anybody remember what kind they are? Yeah. 1 over x, those are the rational function. It's a rational function. Okay? So, my slope better come out to be what sign of a number? Should that slope be negative or positive? That should be negative because of the way it's slanting. Okay. So, does anybody see something unusual going on here that we haven't had before? There's two y's. That's a big one. And it's connected to the x, and that's an even bigger one. When an x and a y are multiplied together, you have to use a rule. What rule do you think we have to use? Product rule. We have to use the product rule on this problem. x is 1, y is 2. They're two different functions. We have to use product rule. Okay, so here we go. Do you all remember the, the secret code for product rule? Yes. Yes, say it for me. 1d2 plus 2d1. 1d2 plus 2d1. Here we go. So 1 is x. d2. What do we write for d2? dy dx. Plus 2 is y. What is d1? 1. one. It's just 1. Now I've had some people say that 1 is dx dx. But dx dx would reduce to be 1, wouldn't it? Think about it. Plus, now take the derivative of this y that's all by itself. What do I write? dy dx equals derivative of 8, 0. Okay. Now, you noticed at the beginning we had two y's. And now I hope you notice that you have two dy dx's. And that is very important. However many y's you start with is how many dy dx's you should have in the first step. If you don't, you made a mistake someplace. Okay? Now, we've never had two dy dx's before. So here is what you do mathematically. You take everything that is not attached to a dy dx and move it to the other side. So this x is stuck to the dy dx, so it stays there for now. This, however, can move. That dy dx stays put. So we're going to write down x dy dx 
plus dy dx equals negative y. Is everybody clear on how I got that? Okay. Does anybody have an idea of what I'm going to do next? No, nope, you can't divide by dy dx. Can't divide by x either. Okay, hold on. If you have a suggestion, raise your hand. Trent. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to separate the dy dx's because I've got to take those two of them and make them into one. Okay, Riley said the word. The magic word is factor. We're going to factor out the dy dx. So here's what we're going to do: write down dy dx and then open the parentheses. When you pull out the dy dx's, what's left? X plus one equals negative y. And now we divide by x plus one. So dy dx equals negative y over x plus 1. Did y'all follow that? And so now at 3, 2, the slope would be negative 2 over 3 plus 1, which is negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. Okay. Any questions?